Hello everyone and welcome to the Sarah Ferruya Coaching Legends interview series with the beautiful Tracy Northcott, part one. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. This is Sarah Ferruya of Sarah Ferruya Coaching and today I am so thrilled to be um, hosting my good friend and one of Tokyo's leading entrepreneurs. She calls herself a multipreneur. Currently the VP of three companies, N4, a company that was started in 2000 by her parents and her brother and herself. Um, also Tokyo Family Stays, which she's the president and founder of with her husband, um, which is all about rentals in Tokyo. And recently launched Tracy Northcott Consulting, where she consults people on setting up their own rentals. Um, Tracy is a dear friend. We've known each other for about 20 years now. She's been in Japan for 20 years and has run the full gamut of entrepreneurial activities, um, starting off with flip top phones. They started the first dictionary on a flip top phone. Then I very quickly had to innovate about 10 years ago with the advent of the iPhone and smartphones and then diversified the N4 portfolio into many, many different areas. Tracy has seen ups and downs in many parts of the business and has had a legendary crash that I think she will tell us about later. She was known as the Katai Goddess and you can still find her blog, The Katai Goddess, out there in the world, which uh, was a really great read and regularly updated in the, in the days before Facebook. As I said, in 2013, Airbnb became the big thing. And at one point she had 20 plus Airbnbs in Tokyo and was making a fantastic living off of that. She's a devoted mother, devoted sister, a devoted wife and a devoted daughter. And I am absolutely thrilled to be welcoming you today, Tracy. <laughs> oh gosh, thank you, Sarah. You're thank so, you. so welcome. So why don't you start off by telling us all about your background, your upbringing, your childhood, and, and the influence of your lovely parents in your life. Hmm. Well, how long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> um, I could talk about, you know, like anybody, I can talk about myself all day. Yeah, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> But um, I, I feel blessed, like, uh, number one. I feel, like, extremely blessed to have uh, been clever enough to have chosen my parents well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an army brat, so I moved around a lot as, as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, it was an extremely happy, happy childhood mm -hmm. um, with, with very supportive uh, family, uh, family and friends. And it was kind of a magical time. Oh. And... I guess I hadn't really appreciated it all until, you know, being an adult and listening to other people's stories, listening to other friends' stories and realising that, um, yeah, I was pretty, pretty fortunate. Um, and, you know, every now and then I just have these little waves of, of, of gratitude and I pick up my, pick up the phone and I, and I call my mum and I was like, mum, no reason, I'm just calling you to say thank you, you're awesome. Mm -hmm. um, just because you know, the, the inspiration takes me, mm -hmm. takes me there. It's, it's, um, I feel that they, they gave me a lot of support and courage and freedom to, to really just be who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, still trying to figure out who that, who that is myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, I'm just, just really lucky that, um, that there was no, none of their needs put upon me. Interesting. It was all about, what do you like to do? And I was given exposure to a heap of things. Athletics and music and, and, and different sports and anything I really was interested in, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, give it a go. You know, you can do that. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, there wasn't any of that, oh, we don't know about that, you know. Uh, it's like, you're interested in it, give it a go. If you like it, keep going. If you don't, that's okay too. So that's really shaped my attitude as an adult when I hear about opportunities or I hear about things that happen I'll go oh that sounds like fun I'll give yeah. that a go uh, without sort of stopping to to think about you know the negative things about what possibly could happen it's like it sounds fun I'm going to do it with, yeah. and uh, that's the courage I feel that that my parents gave me with the upbringing that I had 
gorgeous mm. gorgeous i was going to ask you what you think their special source was uh, as parents but i think you answered that question nicely i think they were just they they came from you know from backgrounds where um they had to go out and be very independent very early mm -hmm. um and they they really chose their own destinies both of them my, yeah. my father my father was an immigrant from the uk and my and my mother grew up on a, on a dairy farm and and wow. knew that that she did not want to live on a dairy farm yeah and so her way out was you know she had to trust her smarts and 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 work hard and 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 be driven and um and, and get out yeah and she did that mm -hmm. and my father and she met up with my father who's from the uk and it's like well the two of them just sort of forged their own destiny together yeah they didn't come from sort of real rules um mm. and because we moved around so much as uh, as kids we were very together as a as a family unit. Right. Again, that's carried through to my adult life because my brother and I still work together. Yeah. We have a family business, and a lot of that is because yeah we moved around a lot and uh, we we didn't have a huge a huge numbers of of family you know within you know within an hour or two's drive. We when when I was a kid we we'd have to jump in the car and drive for two days to go from from Canberra to. Uh, to the Gold Coast, where yeah. majority of my family were, or we'd have to get on a plane and go to the UK. So yeah, mm. it sounds like there's a really kind of just get on with it kind of attitude with the family. It's like if you don't just get on the plane to the UK, your, your dad doesn't see his mom. Mm -hmm. If you don't get travel that two hours, you don't get to do the thing you need to do. Mm -hmm. So it, it just sounds like there's this really strong sense of like just getting on with things. Absolutely, getting on with things, setting a goal. Um, setting a goal and then doing what you need to do to get it done. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't have the education, go educate yourself. And that's the freedom. That's mm -hmm. the freedom that they, that they gave me. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really lucky that, um, that they gave that, they gave that gift to me yeah. that it's like, I honestly do believe I can do anything Yeah. because they told me I could. Yeah. It wasn't until sort of I got up, you know, being an adult that not I realize that not everybody has that they're that, you know they're, they're carrying a lot of baggage from um, from being told what they should and shouldn't be doing and growing up mm. and I think that sort of gives a lot of you know gives a lot of adults uh, a lot of baggage to carry around that that needs a bit of unpacking and yes. and, um, <laughs> And why I have a job. <laughs> and why you have a job, exactly. <laughs> okay. Mm. They're both super active, even in their kind of 70s and 80s now, mm -hmm. right? They're yeah. like, are they like world gate ball champions or something like that? And also, they lived in Shanghai and they she taught in an international school in Tokyo until about 10 years ago. And and she, she used to be super sporty, your mum as well, didn't she? And mm -hmm. then and, and then your dad was going in and flying in and out of the UK. Because... Mm -hmm. Was this, did his mum reach a hundred? Yeah, yeah, she reached a hundred. And she is a cheeky. She's she, she was cheeky. So yeah. Winnie the Witch, bless her. <laughs> um, I hope I I carry some of that your river. Oh, you definitely spirit. do, my dear. <laughs> um, um I, you know, again, no rules. Mm -hmm. uh, no rules applied. Yeah. You know that it's sort of. You know, you you come sort of from a working class background, and and um, you know the only way is up if you choose. If, if you choose, if you choose, yeah. if that's your path, and and you've also got to you know have a personality about it. You've got to have some yeah. some a sense of humour and and be able to you know just just enjoy life. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, yeah, I have a ton of businesses. I don't think I'm ever going to be like a multi million one percent millionaire. But the quality of life that we have is just, we have so much fun and we have, you know, it, it means that I'm sort of not locked into, you know, a, a nine to five yeah. day to day. And I think a lot of that is the, the, the spirit that's that's come through, you know, the gener it's a generational thing. The spirit that's come yeah. through. I yeah. love it. Gorgeous. Um, I, I'm just interested again to talk about your dad very quickly because he moved like, I mean, he's in his 80s now, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like... It was quite unusual for people of that generation to just kind of up and leave the UK. Because mm -hmm. I know you adore your dad. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you see in your dad that really kind of prompted that? I'm just so interested in understanding people's stories of, like, that get up and go and just get on with things. He's, he's always had a, you know... A, a sense of adventure um yeah. you know during the war he was he, he was 
uh, looked after by his his um, his you know his grandmother and his aunt who were you know quite you know quite cheeky and irreverent themselves yeah you know sent off to 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 Europe um, again during the the 50s so this is post war mm-hmm. um, in the military and I just think there was just more to life and, I see and the, there was the opportunity of of you know with 10 pounds getting getting a passage to Australia I see so he took one of those tickets yeah interesting but I think, I, and I'll have to sort of sit down and have a talk with him about it, but uh, over the years he has given me some insight into some of the early mentorship that he had mm-hmm. um, in, you know, he was in the Devonshire Regiment when he was 17 or 18. Yeah. You know, um, and then he worked in a department store. But I, I seem to remember that some of the, you know, almost like the, some of the self-help things that, that come about with yeah. various, with you know, with various uh, um, personal development coaches and whatever he said a lot of these things came from yes. from the original coaching that he had in in the in, in the, the army in yeah. the army know yourself you know uh, be honest and uh, work hard um, and and he said a lot of these things are just not not new ideas no they're, no they're, you know even going back you know, as long as people have been around, yeah. these ideas have been around. Have just been repackaged to to suit whatever the the modern the modern the uh, era. vernacular yes. as well. The modern vernacular that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, yes, but you know, I think the themes that that run all the way through, um, and um, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk to him again actually, get yeah. some more insight about that because he's you know he's told and he'll bring up the names and I've forgotten who they are. Oh, now. press record on yeah. that one, darling. Yeah. Get the iPhone out and press record. Yeah. Oh, like the, just the, the, those those key lessons that, that, yeah. um, that were brought out then. Absolutely brilliant. I mm. love what you're saying here because I often liken what I do as a coach and, and, you know, running workshops and retreats and things like that to what religion used to fulfill for me, mm-hmm. like confession and going to church every Sunday. And like, so I, I now love kind of gathering groups together. Mm-hmm. But I love that, that these ideas are kind of, repackaged to fit the modern vernacular Mm -hmm. i think you've hit on something really really useful there tracy thank Mm -hmm. you so once your family settled in north north australia is that right in queensland Mm -hmm. so then you leave you you go to school you leave school what brought you to japan so let's come up to 2000 it's a a little bit of a story as well Uh i i went to school was very fortunate that that the languages offered at school at my school were were French, German, and Japanese. Okay. You know, it just sounded different. So yeah. and so, I did Jap. I took Japanese. I had no real connection to Japan at all. From another direction, my brother had 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 found Japanese pop culture and uh, through art history and long story there. But um, he found himself in Japan when I was in about grade eleven. What's grade eleven? Grade eleven. Uh, 15, 16 15, years 16. Okay. Is that like is 12, 12 grades? So He's a couple of years older than you, right? Four. Four years. Four. Okay. So, yeah, he found himself in Japan when he was, uh, when I was 15. And, and so for his 21st birthday, I, you know, I said to mum, I said, oh, I'd like to go to Japan for winter holidays, or, which is the summer here. And mum um, said, okay, <laughs> you want to go? Like, you know, you've got, you've got your savings, you can go. So uh-huh. I went. Um <laughs> Uh, looking back, I'm thinking, you know, my mother let me go to another country on my own um, when I was 16 years old. Like, you know, yeah, I was coming to visit my older brother. Yeah. But there's courage there, yeah? There's courage and there's some trust there as well, isn't there? Like, there's a real... There's something about your mum, isn't there, and your both your parents where they just kind of let you be. Yeah, they yeah. do. They, they do. And they, they, they obviously always encouraged us to to be our be true to ourselves Mm -hmm. be um work hard try hard yes um don't rest on your natural abilities Mm. where was i (laughs) we've been talking about coming to japan you just come to japan yeah i just come to japan when i was when i when i was 16 um just to to hang out with my brother who i'm i've never really been sort of the japanophile like you know no me neither actually people say that to me quite often oh you must love japan and i'm like not well yes i love my life yeah but exactly that's not mm-hmm. really my thing whereas your brother is very much the something of file right or no well he has been he's like uh, i think he fits in here better than than he'd fit in other places because mm-hmm. 
here in Japan, there's a club for everybody. Yes. For, you know, every interest and... and um, niche. And niche. And, and the, the wonderful thing about J- Japan is that it, it's celebrated. It's like, you know, you want to do something that's a little bit out there. It's like, well, there'll be a group. There'll be a group. And there'll, there'll be a tribe for you. So, exactly. Um, Rock up with your suitcase, change, go to the tribe that's and leave. Right. <laughs> and, and so there's a there's a belonging. You'll find a belonging somewhere. I love that, Tracy. I think a lot of people get Japan wrong in that sense that everybody has to conform. But actually, oh. so long as you stay within some some bounds, mm-hmm. there's a lot of freedom here to, to, to express yourself mm-hmm. within the rules. Yeah. And as long as you know the rules and learn the rules, mm-hmm. then you can have a great deal of... Leeway, I think, is probably the best way to describe it. Well, and there's multiple tribes as well. So, Absolutely. And, and so for, the, for, the, for your various parts of your personality, you can find a tribe that, that, that scratches your dramatic itch, yes. itch or your, you know, or your, uh, your sporting thing or, you know, just your kooky whatever. There, yeah. there is something that will cover all different types of people. But you've got to get out there. That's the thing. Yeah, and find it. I love that. It's like there's a lot of weekend punks and a weekend rockers yeah. who by day are like rocking up to, you know, yep. Mitsui Sumitomo or something like that. In, in their suits and ties. In their suits yeah. and ties. And then every mm-hmm. now and then the wind will blow and you'll see a little shaved yeah. side and you're like, you're a weekend punk. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So now then you actually moved to Japan at some point. How old were you then? Well, that was 16, back to, back to finish school, went to university, um, and then I was a chemist of all things, so working in a food laboratory, testing export beef for pesticide residues, <laughs> as you do, um, so really random. I did that for a few years, so yeah. working in a food lab, and then I went into sales, of course, because you know, being in a lab is you know, very confining and, and like the same people, and I'm really... Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of an extrovert. Yeah, you. Yeah, it's good for you to be out there, isn't it? It's, yeah. Yeah. There was an again. There was an opportunity within the company to become a sales rep, and I went, yeah, I can do that. So, um, and so they moved me from the lab into selling the things that I was actually making. You know, working with hospitals and medical research facilities, and that was a whole lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a whole again a whole lot of freedom, a whole lot of determining my own schedule and determining my own. Um, uh, when I would work and how I how I would work and mm-hmm. and you know just doing that until I was about twenty eight I think oh wow so okay was, I didn't move here until I was twenty nine okay yeah so yeah. it's a good 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 chunk of time where I was where working I was in, in the business world in, in yeah what what was your takeaway from that do you think like what do you think how did that set you up for this well. I got married early, mm-hmm. so I got married early, <laughs> yeah. um, and thought that that's what was going to be my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and how old were you? Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Mm-hmm. Oh, Twenty-one. Okay. Engaged at nineteen, much to my parents' horror. So yeah, I, you know, I'd been dating this older chap, and and um, and uh, that was all fine. But um, then when I when they said, "Oh, I'm I'm getting en- I've got engaged," and I was just like. Your what? <laughs> <laughs> that was then where their freedom ran out. <laughs> well, they so they were supportive, yeah. of course. Um, there was because they, you know, in those, their day, they got they got together very young, and yeah, and yeah, it's just like, what are you doing? Yeah. I remember at one point, my mother said, "Are you sure? Yeah, are you really sure? And if you're not, now is the time to do something." Mm-hmm. And it's like, not gonna do it. Okay, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, not married very long, so, I, but I think that was a blessing in disguise, didn't fill it up at the time, but it was a blessing in disguise because I just wasn't cut out for that life plan set out for me for the next, for the next 20, 30 years, determined by somebody else. Gorgeous, I love that because, you know, one of the, one of the kind of pillars of coaching is to always look at everything as a lesson. Mm-hmm. And I, and I love that this is one of the things, the, the things that I love about the story of your life is that you always look back and, and look for the juice in mm-hmm. what's happened and the lesson. And yeah. You always tend to face forward and, and move forward. And it is a story of kind of recovery and resilience, never as the victim, never in a complaining way. I, I just love that. I just love the way that you tell your story and what it's all about. I mean, 
that with the I always forget that you were married when you were young and I remember when we were preparing for your wedding 10 years ago and and you were talking about your dress and how you'd really invested in it and you'd got it tailored and everything and I said well you might as well invest in it you only you only use it you only have one wedding dress don't you and you said to me no, not me <laughs> <laughs> no I didn't yeah <laughs> and we had a good giggle and yeah. um so that so that the learning that you took from the first marriage was that it was there to teach you that that wasn't your path. That's right. That mm. wasn't your path, that there was something different out there for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was heartbreaking at the time, let's Absolutely. be... Absolutely. Yeah. You would, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. No. But, you know, that said, I still... I wished harm on the person at the time. I've let that go. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, hating somebody. I was just saying this the other day. It's like hating somebody is like you drinking poison every day and hoping that somebody else dies. Yeah. Well, you know, that's like, it's not going to have any effect on, on, on that. You just, you can only control on what, yeah. what, on your own, on your own destiny. So chalk it up to experience. And then what I did was, you know, put on some feathers and some sequins and went to dance parties a lot. That's right. So you became the the ultimate gay girlfriend, right? I don't know about ultimate, but yes, um, I I found a different tribe. Um, I found a tribe that was extremely, you know, accepting and loving and... Um, the more fabulous you were, the better. Yes. And they, they, there was just no pressure. And it was just, you know, how fabulous can, can, ha, can we out-fabulous each other? Yeah. And, and it was a really, really special time in my life. Yeah. So, you know, again, gave me, uh, uh, filled, my, filled my soul with courage and, and um, you know, realised I was more than, than the label of a, you know, a divorced person. Yeah. So, yeah, so super fun. Um, friends that are lifelong friends that I, you know, still see a lot, um, you know, and, and through the magic of the internet can keep in contact with a lot. Yeah. yeah, I love that you've got this beautiful photograph on your wall, haven't you, of you with all that tri- Brisbane tribe, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Brisbane yeah, friends. The family. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. We all had, like, family t-shirts made as well. Oh. Yeah, with like nicknames on the back. It's so important. Community is so important, isn't it? And having a circle of people and having a group who you can, you know, um, who you can really rely on and look after and and who see you, who That's see right. you for That's who right. you are. Because mm-hmm. when you're coming out of something like your first marriage and the heartbreak and the kind of the way it makes you question yourself and all those kinds of things, tell me where I'm wrong. No, no, you're yeah. absolutely right. To have other people kind of reflect back your brilliance and beauty to you is so important so that you can just build yourself back up again and become, as you say, not just the kind of divorcee. And have people look at you and go, and how are you? Hmm. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, see me. Feathers, see me. Yeah. <laughs> see me. <laughs> see me. Yeah. Um, it was a way to explore a different side of myself that hadn't really had a lot of food and hadn't had a lot of um oxygen yeah you know it's hard work to keep up all that fabulousness you know, yeah. <laughs> you know it's, it's a lot of work yeah um to be on the danger is that you can you know you can you can put the mask on and you can put the you can t- you can wear the dress and you can wear the you can wear the 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 image you get lost your, your authentic self gets a loss a little bit so you know you need to be around people that love you the fabulous side as well as the you know as the real side and see both Conscious. and and accept both yeah mm. i love it but it's reciprocated as well so yeah. you know there's been some beautiful moments where you know where where people have been you know having a having a great time everyone's celebrating but then there are times when they need you and you're there so that reciprocal thing you're talking about there Tracy I know of a very specific example if you don't mind me naming it that you would share with me Mm -hmm. so there's a very specific example isn't there where one of your friends sat you down and gave you a talking to because you were really in that space of not feeling like you were enough Mm -hmm. and feeling a bit like you weren't good enough or something along those lines and Mm -hmm. you weren't you were shining the light on everybody else Mm -hmm. but weren't shining it back into yourself Mm -hmm. and this friend sat you down right so Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell actually, us about that? This is so important that yeah. we witness each other. It was three friends actually, and it yeah. was just they, they they were I felt that my value was when I was wearing the mask, when I was wearing right. when I was on. Yeah, you love me because when I'm on I'm funny and you know, I'm funny as hell and I'm and 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 uh, you know, I make you feel a certain way and mm-hmm. and that's what I thought what was my value. Mm-hmm. And they're going, "Well, no, we we like you for you, who you are, 
And like, and I was just like, I kept deflecting yes, and deflecting. Yes, I can imagine. And, yeah. And no, 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 no. It's like really, like really pushed in, and it was just made me realize that no, they saw me. They saw me as all of the on bit, but also all of the other bit as a as a as a complete person, oh. and that person was a valuable human. Oh my god, I've got chills oh, no, all over right. my body. I've got full body goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, we call them FBGs and Sarah for your for your coaching, and it's when <laughs> it is. It's when seriously. everyone in the room has got them, it's and fine. it's when it's when we it's it's that like. That I I just like it's a feedback system. These these goosebumps for a feedback system, and to me, it's the only way I really know when we've got down to a really strong, authentic truth, mm -hmm. because it's out of here and it's in our bodies, and I just love it. And I call it FBGs, and I know then I just love that story so much. Mm -hmm. But then that's not the end of that story, it's is definitely it? Definitely not. So the end when of that we talk story. about this reciprocal thing as well, and I think this has happened quite recently, is that right? About twelve months ago. Yeah. About twelve months ago. So this is like so twenty-five years later. Twenty-five years later. So then, what happens next? Well, in the meantime, I'd had like a couple of times where I'd felt like I. I I felt like I wanted to write a letter and say thank you to yeah. the, the, these three, these three, you know, beautiful people who who were there, who, who were there that day, and I wanted to write a letter, and and I just never never did it, and for some reason that I never actually put pen to paper, but I happened to have a um, a, a coffee, just me and 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 um, a girlfriend that I went to high school with, and. And and I sat there and I said, look, I need to tell you something. And I'm if I cry, I'm sorry, but I need to tell you something. The, the, the gift that you gave me that 25 years ago gave me so much power and so much courage, and I want to thank you. And she tried to deflect it. <gasps> and she tried, she said, oh, no, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm happy that you're happy, but, you know, this is all you. It's like, oh, no, darling, absolutely not. Yeah. You didn't let me deflect that a uh, gift um, or pass it off as oh you know it's not important it it was you made me realize my own value as a, as a human and that's extremely powerful it's um, extremely powerful because you know like I said I'm not going to be a multi-millionaire I'm not going to be super famous I'm questioning that but we'll come back to that <laughs> whatever but uh, that seems to be what what society values but at the end of the day that's that's one percent of the whole population. Ninety-nine percent of people need to feel that that they are also a valuable member of the oh human my God, race. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Tracy. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this this technique you've actually used has been identified in positive psychology mm -hmm. as an actual technique where you write a letter to somebody, and the idea is you actually take it to them and you read it to them. Right. And mm -hmm. it creates positivity in both people, mm -hmm. and then it creates a kind of more a, a, a general positivity in the field. And, and mm -hmm. I think that you you actually did this without realizing you were doing a technique. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? But you're absolutely right. Just witnessing people in that way is yeah. so so important. I did this for a friend, my German friend, who was returning back to Germany. Um, and I um, wrote her this letter on the back of a little postcard I was going to give her and I'd written it really small. And when I got to the place where we were saying goodbye to one another, I'd forgotten my glasses. So I couldn't <laughs> read it. So I had to take photographs of yeah. sections of it and zoom in on oh, it. So it kind of <laughs> took us out of the moment. But at the same time, it still had the same effect. Right. We both had a little, you know, a little glassy eye mm -hmm. there. There was a little, mm -hmm. little something in both of our eyes there. It's human. It's a human experience, and and in the day to day running around of of, of living, um, you know, I think a lot of that gets forgotten. Um, and it's just Agreed. really important, just you know, not to have like daily existential <laughs> crises, but just to realise that you know what life is all about. It's not yeah. just getting up and going to work and going to bed. It's just life is is it's there to be lived and it's there to be you know enjoyed. And human connection is such a, a real part of that. Yes, and that gratitude thing as well, like showing gratitude to somebody, it's like, because that was a real pivot point in your life, wasn't mm -hmm. it? When these people sat down and had that conversation with mm -hmm. you, it took you into some kind of depths of yourself. And then you, yeah. you were able to deliver that gift back to your friend as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love it. I, I, I just think that's such a lovely story, Tracy, and so mm -hmm. in line with 
the way that you just authentically and genuinely live your life and take take life by the scruff of its neck or whatever Mm -hmm. that sounds so violent doesn't it like (laughs) take life and just you know pull just with joy there's so much joy Mm -hmm. oh i wish i read more poetry because you know this the poetry that i did in high school was all about sucking the marrow out of life and all the existentialism you know that those are the things that you know i haven't read these things for 20 years but i sort of wanting to keep coming back to them because that's you know these you know william blake and all of those people they 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 had all of these same human thoughts however however long ago so it's still part of being human absolutely um, and it sort of connects us across the across the ages yeah love so. it and that, i think this is one of the the reasons i'm having these conversations with people as well is because i want that feel that connection mm-hmm. the connection between you and i but also the connection in this room and also just the connection with the audience mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. all right so early days in tokyo so you continued being fabulous <laughs> and you because uh, when i met you you were so very fabulous and um there were many corsets there were, <laughs> there many, were many corsets, corsets. There were... and there were many feathers and there yes. were many glitters mm-hmm. and there was a lot of clubbing still yes and there was just a lot of very creative people in the, in our mm-hmm. like when we met we met through a mutual friend right who lived in brisbane who mm-hmm. i was in a shared house with mm-hmm. and so there was just a lot of just a lot of fabulousness like we 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 live the spectrum what was just so nice is that that about living in Tokyo in my like like early thirties was that just the broad variety of people that you would meet yeah um, and it was just so much fun it was such an inclusive group too though. yeah because we were all foreign mostly yeah or all from you know from somewhere else yeah um, and you know a lot of our Japanese friends were from not actually native from Tokyo anyway yeah so there was again a new tribe. Um, and, but there, there was all flavors within that. So, and it was all very, very accepting. It's like, you mm-hmm. know, there, there were gay people and there were the straight people and there were pansexual people. It doesn't, and it, and it didn't really matter. It was just, you know, who you were and how much fun you could have and, and, um, how much karaoke we could sing. Oh yeah, there was karaoke. <laughs> there was much karaoke. There was some interesting clubs. There, there was, was a lot of underground kind of stuff, of wasn't there? Yeah, but the thing is, you can explore that sort of thing here, and yeah. like anything here, and you know that it's a really, really safe place. And, yeah, and uh, you know, you can have a few too many drinks and walk down the street and not sort of be worried about uh, you know someone taking your bag or worse. Um, and that's what's lovely about Japan, which is still. Thank goodness, which is still a, a factor here. So tell us about um, N4 then. Well, that's a family The creation, business. the yeah. start, Japan, the Keitai goddess, how you how you forged this kind of persona, or what would you call it, like an avatar, this mm-hmm. this creature, the Keitai goddess, who got on the front of magazines and yes. was just this, this great character when I first arrived here. And uh, the apps, the wake of the iPhone... And maybe we can have a little look at when disaster struck That's right. and how you recovered from that. Because I just love how pragmatic you are about these things. And it's not to say that you're not sensitive because you're incredibly sensitive and we've winched together in many a time. <laughs> but like, it's that sense of like, just getting, pick yourself up and move on. Pick mm-hmm. yourself up and move on while feeling your feelings. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just love it. And, and bigger things, like when I think about some of the things that you faced, I'm like, whoa, how did you recover from that? Mm-hmm. Well, it's just, you know, you've got to just take one day at a time. I, I I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I've never really been a massive goal setter, as in, like, really articulated, like, I want this and I want it to look like this and I want it to have it by this day. You've started that recently, though, haven't you? Well, I have, yeah. I think 50's looming. So, so let's... Oh, good, good one, <laughs> good one. 50's looming. Well, no, 50's, 50's arriving with its arms wide open, That's right, to fill right. you up with, with more gravitas and joy right. and crone status, 50's darling. The black, is we'll be wearing yeah. our crone mm. crowns. Oh, I must get those made. Branding yeah. them. Sarah Fruya Coaching, crone crowns. <laughs> <laughs> available on iTunes <laughs> and all good retailers yeah so let's go back there so when N4 started and just take us on that journey a little bit well I, I've got to be really brutally honest the creative the creative vision has always been my Richard. brother yeah. always um, and um, you know all credit to him he, he doesn't just I've always said that he doesn't actually just think outside the box he just draws a new box and thinks outside of that. Yeah. Um, and again, he's, you know, he doesn't hear the word no a lot. 
as in even if someone says it he just it doesn't may have a lot of resonance with him and it's just like well I can do that and I can do that again perhaps because we're you know of the same nature nurture you know upbringing um yeah he, he just decides on something and, and goes and does it um we don't plan things out very well or don't plan things out a lot it's just we see an opportunity and we go and take it yes so i just want to interrupt here because what i'm hearing here tracy is that there's no one way to do business actually because you have a thriving business for the last 20 years and it's gone up and down and up and down and up and down and you are truly entrepreneurial in that way because you keep innovating, innovating and finding new ground and finding new ways to make money and finding new ways to do business. Mm. But you're saying like, you're both quite unusual characters. He's very creative. He draws new boxes. He doesn't hear the word no very much. You don't Mm -hmm. plan very much. You're not really goal setters. Now, this goes against every book you'll read, every bit of business advice that anybody will give you. Mm -hmm. And yet, here you are. And this is what I love. And this is one of the kind of focuses of this this series of of interviews of conversations is to assure people there are different ways to do things and do them well and do them successfully and do them in the way that feels right for you now fine tuning comes along the way like you said oh, i'm knocking at 50s door now mm-hmm. so maybe it's time to start planning a little bit more rigorously yeah. of course you have a young child as mm-hmm. well and so there's a lot of kind of things that need to be factored into the next 10, hmm. 15, 20 years that that mean more rigorous planning is going to be useful. On the other hand, I love this idea that you can do a business in your way. Well, it, it sometimes our style makes it hard for people to work right. for you. Yeah. Because some people want to have Need a the very definite structure and yeah. they want to have you know, the weekly meetings where they know what they're going to be doing and they don't, they, they're not able to, you know, have a curveball thrown at them and then them to be able to deal with it. That, if that's not your personality, then, then, then really we're not the right place for you to work. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, that said, I think we, you know, there are things that we could do, you know, we could do better to help ride out some of these storms some Mm -hmm. you know sometimes but at the same time i think if we you know we wait for things to be perfect then you know that that ship sailed yeah there's no real way to run a business there's you know as long as you've got you know you hire people that do your taxes and follow the law yes um (laughs) and which is yeah kind of important yeah um and really you can set your own rules it's like no, you know the one thing is, is that if every let's say everything does go to go to hell in a handbasket, and we we it's not sustainable anymore. I've got my health, I've got my talents. I can always go and work for somebody else, right? Yeah. So you know, and when you know that, and it's not like oh my goodness, it's the be all and end all. I have to make this right, and I have to make this perfect. Um, and then then you then you sort of limit yourself immediately mm. but if you think well you know i'm going to give it a go we'll we'll see what happens um i think it's going to work i hope it's going to work then really you, you just let the chips fall with their money sometimes um and you seize the opportunities where you see them and and also you do things that you, that that really inspire you so when you and uh richard start the business at the beginning he's already here he started the business and then you come over to join as what the vp at that point vice president or did you just join to to come and see what what was going to happen for you and Um, what was the business as well what business were you in my brother started this business yeah so he originally was working in the music industry and was yeah he's working for music um so he's always been into music of some description Mm -hmm. um um, but no it started off with um uh, input methods and desktop publishing so um he was working in the music industry and there was no way of um printing japanese characters on record album covers because printers couldn't handle the double double byte characters um and and it was all done litho, it was all lithograph, it was mm-hmm. all sort of done manually. But And all printers at that time were made for single byte only. And so it was made in the US or in those in those countries for English only mm. characters. Mm. And so Asian script and left to right scripts and all those things just couldn't couldn't happen on a normal printer. And it's not that long ago that this was, this is, I'm not talking the dim dark ages. I keep saying to my son who's eight that... You know, when I was, you know, when I was a girl, we didn't have, I didn't even have a phone at home when I was growing up. This, the company started doing, doing desktop publishing for fonts um, and input methods. And then 
um, you know, my brother went to the Mac, um, the, the Macintosh Developers Conference in Boston. And I want to say this is mid-90s when they launched the Newton. I could look up the dates. He bought the first unit as a, well, one of the first units that were on sale in that, in that uh, conference. He got on the plane back to Japan. He wrote his first script for, to run on that mobile device. And the, on the Newton. Script meaning? Like a computer script. so Like, like JavaScript or C Sharp well, or something yeah, along those yeah, lines. Yeah, so I think C++. So a computer C++, script. Plus, yeah, All so that, like code. He the Matrix was, thing. Yeah, that's it. So writing code. He was writing, he, he wrote a program to run on this new com- handheld computer. Mm-hmm. And because he wanted to see what was under the hood and how he could work with it and how he could hack into it and play with it. And, and so then he became the distributor for that here and had a, and we, there was a whole hardware distribu- distribution network as a way of shipping his software. That, so he was developing the software, which was again in, in running this single byte machine, running it so it would handle Asian scripts, so it would handle Japanese scripts. Amazing. So enter Tracy. I came in the year 2000, just as iMode, which was launched on, on flip phones, um, which was basically mobile internet. Mm-hmm. It, you know, in the, these are the early days of the internet, so um, mobile internet, they, it uses a, a different type of HTML, which is called mm-hmm. CHTML, and NTT Docomo made this walled garden, so you could make, an, you could make a, 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 like a website but have it as a behind a behind a paywall, mm-hmm. so that you so for the, one of the first times, independent developers could get paid for developing software. Interesting. So we made dictionaries. So we started off making dictionaries for NTT Docomo. Twenty years later, it's still in use. Believe it or not, there no, are still people believe. with flip, flip phones, and we still get a certain amount of money every month for that for that legacy That's product. Incredible. My job was to write the first proposal to get our first product onto NTT Docomo. At the mo- at that time we were selling software in a sh- in shops in uh, on CDs, uh, shrink wrap so- software. I'm pretty sure I've got one of those CDs lang- hanging around Probably. this house somewhere. Probably. Yeah. Um, people still write to us and ask for them, believe it or not, <laughs> for, 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 for the Newton. So we used to ship software for the Newton. We used to ship software for other, for, for the Macintosh. But really, the, our heart's always been in mobile. Yeah. Um, mobile devices. At, at that time, I'd walk around with, actually I still do, walk around with multiple mobile devices on me. Um, the Keitai goddess. Keitai. Keitai meaning mobile phone in Japanese, mm-hmm. right? So that's why you yeah. became the Keitai goddess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and also, being a girl, like a, a woman in tech is, is, is not very good. Um, I, I met up with some some other some other women who worked in tech, um, who I'm still friends with. This to what was to that group day. called? Digital Eve. That's right. Yes, the Divas. Yeah. Um, and um, again, a tribe. You know, you know, women who work in tech in, in a traditionally male dominated um, field. You know, being female women in tech. Um, you know, was this an excuse to sort of get together with with people who empathised? What what your daily struggles were like and you can have sit down and have a drink mm. and not have to sort of explain yourself every time. So again, so, there's that community element again, yeah. like finding that community, finding those people who are mm-hmm. like minded, finding those the other weirdos. <laughs> the other <laughs> or the other weirdos. fabulous people That's or the other right. people who are in the same kind of place as you. So there's just this running theme throughout this mm. Tracy where you you're always finding or creating these little pockets of of, of support mm-hmm. and love and community and human connection that you mentioned earlier. But also hanging around with, with other people that jazz me, you know, and inspire me. So yes. it's not just to be, you know, adored and like, you know, aren't I fabulous? It's more like, well, you know, I want to ha- also hang out with people who inspire me inspire and, that, that, and that, that I enjoy talking to as well, that, um, that I, I, I just... I'm always curious about about other people and other people's stories and and um, where where they've come from and what their experience is in and and I love hearing them. Yes. You know? And the other thing I adore doing is connecting this person and this, this person. person. Yeah, I'll come to that in a, yeah. in a bit. I love that. That's something I think that both of us are really passionate about. Thank you. That's the end of part one. 
Look out for part two coming soon.